So, uh, welcome to the eighth, uh, eighth round of the first China BP hosted by VLCU. Uh, I call this house to order uh, and to, on the debate, on the motion that this house would legalize public unity. Uh, with great honor, I call upon the opening government's Prime Minister, Mr. Heng. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Very good afternoon, Mr. Speaker, sir, and member of this honorable house. Now, first, I would like to identify what our government hopes to do with this motion. We would now allow public display of human beings in a state of unclothed, in the sense they are not wearing anything, in full view of everyone else who happens to be in the location of the act. And, and this action will not incur any legal and consequence, any legal consequences and implication imposed upon by the state. Now, ladies and gentlemen, although there are some although there are some people that I don't want to see naked in this world, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but more importantly, I want to ask, I want to first identify the, the notion of nudity. Nudity is a state where someone is not wearing anything, and can I say, it's a state where, where a person is most natural. Now, some people will see this form where the human being, the human species as the most natural, as a kind of expression. And this state, what this state believes in, the principle in this state is the freedom of expression. Some people might use nudity, will use nudity as a form of expression, as a form of communication. And this state believes that everyone has the right to communicate themselves, to express themselves in whatever way they deem it without, and notice this, without causing any third party harm. So, yeah, we, yeah. so we now have to come into this. Does public nudity cause any third party harm? This government thinks that public nudity does not cause any bodily harm to the rest of the society. Now, second, second point that I want to raise out today is the notion of art. What is art? Well, art, yes, art is a very, very difficult thing to define. And what we see here today is art. To take it more generally, to say art is a form of conveying idea and to stimulate feeling. And what the government today thinks is that it should not be bounded by any form of legalization any form of public should not be limited by the public law. Now, while different people have different understanding of what constitutes art, we see this as an exchange of idea and a freedom for us development. And we see here today what, what the current status quo is whereby public unity, the outright display of a state of unclothed, is, is being considered by the state as a form of a criminal activity and therefore one that is not promoted by the state. Sir, now, sir, sit down. So, wh what, what am I doing here today to tell you about the concept of nudity and the concept of art? So let me go to what? So I'll finish, my, I'll say my third part of my speech, which is the role of the government. Now, the role of the government encourage the freedom of expression of people. We will not, we do not limit what people think as a form of communication and a form of expression of their true self. What this government is, is a government that, sit down, that encourages art, encourages of expression of feeling and expression of idea in different form. We are a very embracing government. We should not, sit down. I'm embracing government. <laughs> I don't embrace you also. But anyway, oh, <laughs> okay, this, what this government does is the embrace, embracement of different ideas well, well, the opposition might say, what are these, what are these ideas are wrong, but I want to put uh, for the role of government is also not to decide what kind yeah, yeah. of, what kind of artistic and expression ideas are criminally law. Now, what the data calls doing, doing today is setting a limit to public expression, setting a limit to communication, and setting a limit to how our citizens express themselves. And this is what, what, this is what, what we propose want to, what we have are proposing that want to eradicate this mindset. On that, sir. Okay. Sir, I'm, uh, I, I, I like to sing. Yeah. I like to sing very loudly in 3 a.m. in the morning in front of everybody, yeah. in front of the household. Is that okay with your government? Yeah, uh, yeah. Notice I use the word that the freedom of expression comes with 
a condition which is it should not cause any bodily harm. You seeing at 3 a.m. I can argue that's a bodily harm caused by that. I take your, 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 your partner's question already. Thank you very much. <laughs> so now, today what we are here discussing is whether citizens have the right to express themselves. Although some might agree that, some might disagree that there are different forms of expression. What we see here is we are a very embracing government and we should embrace all forms of communication and display of display of uh, their true expression in the state of in the, <coughs> the state. Most specifically today, nudity, the state of being unclothed is what we see here as a most natural state. Their movies, their their ideas, they are being communicated through nudity. For example, let's take a for example David, the famous statue by Michael Angelo. There's a purpose of it not wearing clothes. And it's the, Okay, and it's the artist's desire to attempt to express his own feeling and emotion through the unclothed. And we see today the government is not at the position of trying to limit this expression. And therefore, this government would legalize public duty. Before I end up, I would like to before I, I end up, I would like to I would like to I would like to say that more points will be clarified by my deputy prime minister on the societal view about this issue. Every time I ask my shit. Thank you very much. Alright, my thanks to the prime minister now to see whether or not <coughs> to see whether or not this government is really an embracing one. Uh, <laughs> uh, leader of all. Okay, honorable judges and my fellow debaters. Today I'm very proud here to stand to have a speech to protect the orthodox civilization that has deeply rooted and developed for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for a long time since the early society. And before I do that, I would like to make several rebuttals to the statement brought by the Prime Minister. So it seems that the first issue that the Prime Minister is worried about is that so if we do not carry out this policy, it might affect the freedom of expression. And in his idea, he thinks that the freedom of expression is legitimate with a conviction that it does not do any harm in the body. But however, I really want to raise a concern that is the harm of a body the only concern we are paying any attention to? So what if it be more harm in the body? So what if it be hard, not only physically, but also mentally, for example, by carrying out this policy, by uh, explicitly stating that it's okay for you to be naked in the public society, what if it does harm to affect the civilization, the kind of orthodox civilization we have already developed in society? Uh, yeah. And I will elaborate why is that orthodox civilization so important in my constructive speech. No, sorry. And secondly, they seem to be worried about the development of art. And they say that if we do not allow naked bodies in public, it will affect the development of art. Yes, I agree that body, uh, make, uh, body nudity is an important form of art. But however, they never tell us why do we have to do it in public. Yeah, yeah. So if you would want to uh, develop the art through your naked body, you can do it at home. You can take pictures and upload these pictures on the internet. <laughs> so, but why do we have to do it in public? Yeah. So this is where this is where the argument lies authentication. So the third thing is that they think the government has the role to, in, to encourage this this expression of freedom. But however, we also see that government has a role which is equally and maybe more important, and that is to give a right guidance and direction to determine where the civilization where the, where the development of the civilization, the development of the civilization in society should be going. That is going on the right way that will not this not that will not annoy or offend the general public. So before I, I'm, I'm sorry. So my constructive speech will uh, uh, in my constructive speech I will approach this policy in two aspects. First, I'm going to do a careful analyze about the nature of clothing and second, I'm going to talk about what the role of gov government in a society should be. So the first thing is about the nature of clothing. So regardless in those thousands of years ago people do not wear clothes because we have fur around our body that keep us warm, and then when we evolved, we lose those fur, and then we, we need clothes to keep us warm. Okay, this, is, uh, this is, might be irrelevant, but later, the more important thing is that this, the clothing serves more meaning than just merely keeping yourself warm, because clothing, in modern society, they also reflect the identity of a certain person. They reflect the personal yeah, yeah, yeah. taste. They reflect, so they reflect how it tastes, they reflect your thoughts. So we see that we identify people based on their 
based on uh, based on their uh, based on their appearance, based on what they wear, and by appropriately dressed in public places, it is also we also regard it as an important. I'm sorry. We also we also regard it as an important sign that you are also aware of the feeling of others. So one important fact that has already been set up in our society is that we agree that people should be appropriately dressed in public places. So it's natural that when we see somebody naked yeah. in the street, hold on a minute, uh, see somebody naked in the street, we feel offended. This is a fact. This is the taste of the general public, and we think that this is justified to have this taste. So we think that it's important for people to be dressed up appropriately in the society, and this is very important. Okay, before I move on, I will take the... Take the mo uh, take the point for the lower house. Thanks. So, will you allow or advocate bikini in public places? Yeah, this is what we are aiming at. We don't. We do not allow. We do not allow nudity in public places we, because we think the bad influence brought by this nudity in public, in this context, public is more is more negative. So this is so. What I want to prove in my in this first point is that we think that dress up appropriately in the society is a sign of respect to the feeling of others, and it's also a sign of that of a sign that our civilization is going in the right way. That means the raising awareness, the raising awareness of dress up appropriately in the society is very important in this ideology level. And second, I'm, uh, I would like to talk about the role of the government. So um, the prime minister has said that the role of government is, uh, is. It seems that he assumes that the role of the government is to maximize the freedom of individual without any other concern. But however, we see that in this aspect, there is a, a concern which is equally more important, which is equally and might be even more important. And that is, government government has the ability to determine the uh, in which direction the civilization will go. So we see that. Um, the government really have to determine, really have to carefully decide, and a, a, so a kind of justified direction that a civilization should develop. And so, what is the justified direction of civilization? And that is a kind of civilization, a kind of social courtesy that everybody sorry. feels comfortable. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So what? So what is the social courtesy that everybody feels comfortable in the current society? And that is, we would like to see people dress up decently. Uh, beside us, we wanted to see people dress appear in the society in an appropriate, in an appropriate way. This is a fact that has been shared by everybody in the society. We do not want to see that when everybody is dressed up appropriately, and then there come a naked, naked person. And I'm sure that most of them, most of the people, will still be embarrassed and offended by this practice. So we think that the so the so the way that we feel comfortable in our society is that we want everybody to dress up. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, to dress up appropriately, and I think that the role of governance is, the, is definitely that should encourage such practice. And this practice, since it satisfies satisfy the taste of the most of people, we think it's justified for the government to, uh, to um, encourage the, pra the practice of dressing up appropriate, appropriately. And with all those issues covered above, we are very proud to oppose this motion. Thank you. <coughs> My thanks to the leader of opposition. Now moving back to opening government, EPM. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Before I go into my main speech, I would like to talk about several rebuttals that I have. First of all, uh, first of all, the previous speaker spoke of the fact that um, the government uh, is trying to force people to watch nudity and that is harming the people because the people, as they call themselves, we, they feel offended. We feel that there are two assumptions here that we feel are very deeply problematic in nature. First of all, they claim that we are forcing the people to watch nudity. However, watching nudity, like watching pornography, like watching movies, it is a matter of consumer choice in nature. Inevitably, in the, in the public, as you walk down the street, you might caught an eye with an activity that you do not like. However, it is still ultimately a matter of choice that you continue to watch it with eager, with passion or not. Secondly, we feel that um, the idea of being offended, the negative impact has been spoken about I think more than four times. However, the previous speaker has failed to explain to us in detail why is it negative? Why is watching, uh, why is visualizing public nudity negative and why does the the general society yeah, which yeah. he claims without any societal context in, in, in any countries for example is, is feeling offended with that it brings me to my first point uh, we feel that so sorry we feel that uh, we feel that um, 
this uh, we are supportive of this notion to legalize public nudity because simply put it, like what my previous speaker said, it causes no third party harm. I take for example a case in Singapore that I always remember. There was a scholar two years ago. He he was he was she was drunk one day. She was drunk one day in the middle of the night. She suddenly uh, she suddenly felt very passionate and then she went onto the street. She took off her clothes with her boyfriend and then having been being caught up by a few eyes, they felt that oh no, this thing is being wrong. So people actually took it out. They actually filmed it and then the next thing we know, this scholar is being removed of her of her rights and expectations of being a scholar and then ripped off the be, the status of being a scholar. We feel that this is a blanket rule that, that, that is overly harsh on the people. Why is that so? We move on to my second point because of the so sorry because of the freedom of expression. We feel that people have a right to express ideas and uh, ideas of their wishes in attempt to make connection with people. We feel that this is ultimately what people is for. People we make connection with people we provoke the feelings we evoke things and from there we challenge the notion. How is that so that previously, as, you, as the previous speaker had said, orthodox civilization that he has failed to unpack is feeling offended just because people is trying to rethink on these archaic traditional values that simply go against the values that we, we today have. We today, we look at democracy, we look at freedom, we embrace liberalism, we look at people, we look at we look at people and then we want people to be able to express themselves and from the positive impacts of these expressions we want our society to move forward and I tell you, so sorry, I tell you this uh, uh, this legalizing of this public nudity it is not uh, it is not simply putting it letting your three-year-old kid on an everyday basis looking at Shamlin with his penis and then oh this is nice we are not doing that we are legalizing we are so sorry just for example we are legalizing the the portrayal of this public nudity by people who really have the genuine interest in showing and evoking feelings from there and that's why my previous speaker actually spoke about the notion of art we feel that in this discussion the issue of no, the art is very important essentially what's the function of art since back then till now the function of art is to convey ideas Ideas that more, more, more often than not challenge and evoke uh, feelings that challenge the notions and past limitations. We hope that from this line, line of view, we can allow public nudity so that it can challenge notions that in the past such as um, um, shamefulness, that we feel that it is inevitably some baggage of the past that we think this orthodox civilization has nothing to do with. We feel that as we move forward with life, we want to embrace liberalism and that's why my government is very um, sincere in bringing out this notion. I would like to close off with my last point. We feel that uh, we feel that we want to so sorry, we, uh, we, we feel that with great power, inevitably comes with great responsibility. We are not saying that by legalizing, uh, we assume that people are able to abuse. We will, by allowing, at this point of time, allowing uh, citizens to be able to portray public nudity, at the same time, we will be also giving education. We will be telling people what is the notion of public nudity. We will be educating people why are people showing their, their body with um, such rigor. We are not just allowing this thing to go out and just wait for the negative impact to happen. As a government, we also want to educate people and from there we want to expose people to this public nudity in hopes that this will move our society forward. And with that, uh, we hope that no, uh, we want to prevent the intention to harm people. With that, I close off my argument today. Yeah. Well, my thanks to the Deputy Prime Minister, or moving on to the second Deputy, Deputy Leader Wong. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, if our government bench is not going to win this debate, I would love to ask Mr. Law to get naked in front of everyone from the first beginning. But first, I'd like to review what's the logic of the, uh, of the government. Mr. Speaker, today, firstly, they're saying we need to protect their freedom of expression. But Mr. Speaker, let's think about whether they cut is that getting naked in public the only way to express yourself, to protect your freedom of expression, Mr. Speaker. If you're only equal with freedom of expression with getting naked in the public, it's so not justified to just sim simply if making this assumption. And second, is like they mentioned about what's the best way to promote uh, 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 encourage the development of art. So now I'm questioning about the purpose uh, uh, about the government because they told us that they want this uh, 
uh, uh, society move forward, but allowing nudity of art. So it's kind of pre it's kind of a mixed up that which one do you want to protect? Which which group of people you are trying to protect? You are trying to protect the, the kind of I don't know who are the general public who want to get naked so badly, or the performers or the art workers in this area. It's kind of confusion in their logic in the in the second and first place. And, and Mr. Speaker, let's think about my part of proof. You, what's our opposition? What is quite clear? We want the, the society to move forward in a more civilized way. But I have to show you that if we do, if we legalize it, legalize this behavior, in short term, actually, it already harm against the favor of most of members of the society. Mr. Speaker, we have to think about what is happening in society. Why this group of the Singaporean they, they get caught and, and, and be punished by I, I don't know what, what whatsoever it is. But the problem is that actually the government, one of the role of government, actually they are presenting the, the, uh, the idea of most of of most of members of the society. So today, my, my argument is quite simple. Where the government should take a neutral step when dealing with the favor of different group of members in the society, when most of the members actually share a common idea on certain social courtesy, where the government is justified for them to tell you which one is more, is better. First, I will show you why I won't argue it this way. First, let's think about the government is legalizing something, but we have to draw a knowledge about which kind of we're trying to legalize. We're trying to legalize prostitution. Why? Because we found that something like law is made from preventing more harm. For example, in, the, in this legalizing prostitution, actually, we're preventing more harm that this prosti uh, prostitute, they can be abused, or they can do, they don't have many way, they're going to treat it well. But the problems, again, prove you, they will say, these people, they want to get naked, and they will have some kind of social norm pressed. But the problem is, when this is not tangible, how, why we should legalize and be using this law system to, to send to telling you that which is better. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, let's think about when we're legalizing Sorry. something, actually the, the, the government is granting and sending a, a really powerful message to telling you getting naked in public is oh, is justified. But the problem yeah, is again, let's come back come back to to, to my as well. it, it's like we believe that we also it's quite clear. The, the civilized way of the movement should be like we should let the city sit sit uh, uh, for the system to choose and gradually accept a certain of ideas, not just for the government coming to the state and telling you, hey, actually, where I know 99 of 100, you don't like public nudity. Because of the 1%, that I'm going to grant it the right for all of, for, for all of you. So there's no sort of unjustified jumbo. We know every social change and every social advancement is controversial and is provocative. How come that there are so few gay people but who need bright, so few people who want to express naked, so few people who want to express in bikini, why can't they do so? You are facing a double standard. How can you define social appropriateness? Mr. Speaker, today the problem is like if somebody is they want to get naked that badly, actually as in China you can get naked and if this no citizen like like telling the person, actually it's fine for you to get naked and no, no one will care, the problem is like so but again let's come back to this is that whether the government is justified to use the whole system to, to in favor to favor the interests of some group of the, of the member. Of course, the government they're trying to argue that this group of people, they are kind of uh, vulnerable and another part for them to, to, to help them to express themselves. But it's not just the case, Mr. Speaker. Actually, it's like, why is the difference you're wearing bikini walking on? Whether there's a difference between when you're wearing bikini walking on the beach and get beaches and, and walking on the street. The problem is that there's no really just no tangible uh, difference between these two. But the problem is that we granted this small group of people while it's uh, sort of against the, the idea of the favor of most of the member. The problem is that the best way when we're dealing with the favor of different group or interest of favor group, in our case, is that we believe that it's better for them to gradually accept it. This is not the time, because the long-term benefit, the government's role is not just coming out Mr. Speaker, when you legalize something, actually are prioritizing the interest of different group of members. Uh, in this case, they're prioritizing the need of that small group of for people. They so want to get naked, someone like John Wall or, 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 or the psychic Mr. Locke. And, and the second place is, the second place is, when you, you provide yourself, actually, 
no one is thinking about the interest of the, uh, of the majority. And in order, we believe that in this case, the government is better to show a neutral step when dealing with our favor. Because it's never a clear issue, they're ready to justify. Because again, uh, the government's role is always like they're representing the people. They should justify in the very first place to represent the idea of most of the members share on the certain courtesy, which is agreed for long, many years, not just now, Mr. Speaker. I'm glad to propose. My thanks to the Deputy Leader of Opposition now. We move on to the closing halves of the debate. Closing government, uh, Ms. Shi.
Berta, if people saw something ex extremely shameful, if another man saw your faces, yeah. no, I, okay, go. Man, the question is, if today I criticize the religion or Islam in your country, is your government be acceptable to that criticism? Uh, yes. This is an identity choices. We don't say which civilization is superior than another. We are talking about when people yeah. have the incentive to be naked in public. We don't force other people to be naked. We to say if you really want to be, you choose to be, it's okay for you to be naked without punishment accused by the government side. So we say this kind of oppression of women we want to change. And we already see the momentum here. Traditionally in China, we have customs also a, a little bit uh, better than Burka that we cover most parts of the body. But as time progresses, we have t-shirts. We even develop bikini for you because we recognize the, the, the beauty of men. So we don't think that since, uh, the, the, we, don't, we, we do think the momentum exists. I'm secondly, going to talk about the purpose, uh, this uh, the, the, uh, nature of clothes. Yes, we agree. There are certain courtesies, there are symbol of civilizations. Well, all of those things contribute to one, one function that's helping you feel better about yourself, letting you be a better function being in society. But nowadays, in that, we see this kind of strong social norms already acting as a coercion towards you, kidnapping to your choice, limiting your choice. For example, you must wear high heels when you are registered as an office lady. This is strongly required by your bosses. For example, you have to wear suits when you go into the office, regardless of all the problems or troubles associated with that. So that is why we say this kind of social, this kind of coercion already hindering people's choices. We already, people feel bad about it, they feel limited about it. They don't can, they can never be the one they really want to be. So that is why nowadays, many cases, people want to be naked in public because they feel more free. Because they get, the moment they get rid of the clothes, they feel that they get rid of all the social responsibility that attach with that part of the suit. Uh, uh, the moment they get rid of them, they feel that they are a totally human being without any kind of assumption from the other person. So that is why we say nowadays, as people are chasing after LV, such kind of luxury groups, it's exactly the same. Because when you're wearing and carrying that such kind of bag, it's telling other people, showing your social status. Well, we think this acting acts as a way to discriminate people based on what you will instead of what you be. So we think this kind of shackle also limited people's perception, limit people's identity choices, people discriminate you based on what you will. So that is why we strongly advocate public nudity. So Mr. Speaker, uh, in the name of the moral sh morality and the liberation, vote for us. Thank you. All right, uh, my thanks to the member of government. Now moving on to closing our positions. Gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, public nudity is way much more of a serious topic than what we have been presented today. It has been lots of laughter and lots of joke, but the values and the principles that the government bench is like fighting for, like freedom of expression and the oppression against women, deserve much more respect than what they have presented to us. <laughs> now, before we go into this debate, let's first look at certain mistakes committed by Athena. Number one. She claims that public, uh, the public right now has the ability to accept nudity as a form of arts appreciation. The question is, how does she know it? How can she come up to tell us that the public is already accepting nudity as a value of art? Especially when mentioned over and over again, or, uh, expressed by the opening government, that it is an essential part of being artistic. Now the question is, why must artistic, uh, why is artistic value limited to public nudity or nudity as a whole? Is there more perspective to art or is it the only way out for liberation? 
Now, secondly, ladies and gentlemen, no, thank you, sit down. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will include the rebuttals within our arguments pre uh, presented to you, and it will be in direct uh, clash with the closing government and also the opening of uh, opening government. Now, Mr. Speaker, two things that we want to talk about today as closing opposition. Firstly, we want to explain to you about freedom of expression, and secondly, we will mention to you what the what the tokenistic approach that the government bench has to us uh, has to the yeah. SS is how degrading it is, not only to the ideas that they are presenting, also to the people that are actually practicing it. Now, first of all, let's look at freedom of expression. Two questions to it. One, should freedom of expression be managed? And second, should the approach, of, um, 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 should the approach by the government today, expressing freedom of expression, comes with a bank to the society? Now, looking at the first part, should it be managed? Right? I asked in my POI that, is there a limitation to the Islamic uh, critics, criticism uh, to any Islamic country or Islamic society, right? Now, Atina tells us, oh, we are not talking about religion here, we are just talking about self-identity. But ladies and gentlemen, no thank you. No thank you, sit down please. La ladies and gentlemen, the Islamic identity is just like any other identity uh, we feel. Religious, political, clothes or no clothes. But ladies and gentlemen, more importantly, Today, the expression of not wearing clothes in itself is also an expression against the Islamic identity. So, what we are trying to say is, when you want to express certain things, should the government play in a role, in, uh, play a role in balancing out? No, oh, thank you. Balancing out the different expressions. Yeah. Well, so why are we saying this? We see that in the case of the innocence of Muslim videos spreading like wildfire in the uh, United States, the United States claims that because of freedom of expression, because the people should absolute issue well, when it comes to uh, expression in the very own things, then it is okay for us. But why is the concept Consequence, ladies and gentlemen, the consequence is rioting, the consequence is ambassadors in Libya dying. So the situa situation clearly calls for us to have some sort of management, no thank you, and not like the all out situation they call. Now, coming back to the opening government, they say as long as there's no bodily harm to the situation here, then it's perfectly okay. So that, what they're trying to say is that what's the issue with just looking at a naked body? Is it okay for us? But Mr. Speaker, we think that looking at a naked body is more, there's more to the surface in itself. So from the very beginning, you have to look at the society society that you're coming from, right? In a normal society, a, co a normal rational society like we all have, people already don't really accept the idea of nudity in the very first place. So when it comes out to them that there is people in nude, right? The situation is that there will be an uproar here. So the, the uproar the issue that uh, that comes out, the second of the uh, public servant, has never really been tackled by the government right now. And secondly, moving on, no thank you, in the ultra-conservative society, like say the Islamic region, and the Burqa, thank you, thankfully mentioned by Athena, right? The situation is not just against the people's and the very own moral principles, but against the very intrinsic religious value here. And right now, the intrinsic yeah. re religious value, what do you expect them to do? How do you expect them to react? None of them is evaluated. Uh, evaluated by them. Now, secondly, on the part of why we say that this shouldn't come as a bank, we agree that the freedom of expression should have been managed, but it should be managed by political dialogue and political discourse, not in the way of expressing yourself unity. So it should not come up with a bank. Why is that so? Because in this case here, we are trying to talk about something to be legalized, right? So why do we legalize stuff? Two things. Firstly, because uh, <coughs> Firstly, because it's commonly happening in the society today, therefore the, the unlegal situation here doesn't call for it, right? So the situation with public nudity, no danger, is clearly not in this case. It is not common, we don't see people tearing out their clothes every single day, right? Now secondly, because there's a certain degree of no thank you, certain degree of purpose or certain degree of message the government is saying, exactly what the government is doing right now. But the question again fall back to the different societies that we are talking about right here. So in the cultural, common and co uh, conservative society, right, the backlash that we are expecting from the society here is not clearly dealt with and from our, our side of our house we want to mention to you this is a potential possibility to so we'll deal with it now second thing that we want to talk about here no thank you is the tokenistic approach now before I move on yes sir we'll go you are making a very tautological argument. You are saying that in societies in which this ultra conservative, we can't do it. But clearly, this debate is not about that. This is about a society that's embracing, that is liberal, Shit. that allows people to do so in the very first place. Thank you, sir. Now, Mr. Speaker, within a society, there's different fragments, right? No matter what kind of society you are from. So, the embrace, embracing a liberal society, as per now in this common world today, we don't see one exactly actually appearing, right? So, even in the case of the United States, where it's considered ultra liberal and ultra uh, passionate, the thing, the question is, how much, how much liberal areas and how much liberal spaces are we talking about here? So we don't really understand why is it that Chen can suddenly come and claim to it that in our society, in the very first place, we are embracing a very liberal in, the, in the very much. Now moving on to the tokenistic approach. 
Two things we want to talk to you about. We want to express to you, Mr. Speaker, that by having duty in the very first place, it diminishes the value of, say, uh, oppression against women and, say, freedom of expression. Why is that so? So, firstly, on the first part, new as claimed by and, and as proposed by Athena, right? It hints the value of sex. So, rightfully pointed out by Athena that. From the very first place, human beings are taught that, or human beings are educated or don't know, convention by the society that sex itself or nudity itself relates to the sex, right? But it may not be just conventions alone. That people, uh, the people's organs and people's hormones react to the sight of seeing yeah, nudes, yeah. Uh, uh, organs and uh, yeah. Yeah, seeing nudity parts, right? So it's mm. not just convention alone that's working, but also the psychological manner here that's working. So both sides, it works on the human beings and Right now, what do you not want people to think is that whenever I see a woman pol- uh, parading on the streets because he's naked and showing her boobs around, right, that I'm interested to him in a sexually manner. That is the essential point. It is not about women's liberation, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about freedom of expression, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about pure sex, sex and sex proposed by the, the hinting of sex in itself. And secondly, ladies and gentlemen, by Promoting uh, nudity as a form of freedom of expression or a form of anti-oppression against women, right? It is a, in another sense promoting the sense of rebellion, the sense of rebellion against social convention. But ladies and gentlemen, again, come back to it. The question being, how do we rebel against social convention? We think that the rebellion against social convention here right now should be in political discourse and political dialogue and not coming out with a clash and making people at two polarized ends not accepting in the very first place, how do you come to a common consensus? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, freedom of expression, focusing and approach, we stand proud to oppose. My thanks to Chen Lim for that speech now, to the last speaker from the side government, uh, Tumbo. Ladies and gentlemen, free will. This is the two words that I need to stress in my speech. I would like to ask everyone to pay attention to come back to Athena's speech and really get to understand it, whereas Chen Lim has clearly misunderstood it. What exactly is a society that is neutral, a government that is neutral? A neutral government is when public nudity is allowed in the same way as when you wear long clothes, when you wear clothes that covers every part of you, when you wear clothes that doesn't cover a lot part of you like bikinis, when everything is treated on an equal ground. This is what exactly is lacking in the status quo, which was the last part of exactly Chen Lim's speech. When he was saying that, well, currently we do have conventions that people educate, like your next generation, over and over again. That's the exact problem we're pointing out. When clothes is serving as a coercion to people in how they express themselves, we want to tell the society from now on, if you want to express yourself. If you want to advocate for the kind of identity you want, you can feel free to do so. Free will, ladies and gentlemen. So what exactly is the point from opening opposition and why they are actually doing a very bad job? As I mentioned just now in in my POI, they are basically arguing a very tautological argument. They are saying that in society where this advancement is not achievable, it is not achievable. That, That doesn't really go to the crux of this issue. When we see a society in problem, should we make race controversial issues? Should we raise the possibility of social Stop. advancement? Clearly, right, we need to compare the two way of going forward. One way, not allowing public nudity. The other way, allowing public nudity. What we've seen so no, far sir. in a society where there's no public nudity allowed, we've seen strong moral status attached to many different issues. For example, you are told you can't like, like take off your clothes in public. You are told that the only time when you take off your clothes in public, for example, is a, like in front of your husband. This is exact reason when this shame and this whole idea of shame is associated to women as degrading the status of no, women sir. when like when your body and your nudity basically associates to your like to you being owned by your husband. Whereas it's the same thing when you tell the men in the society saying that see you are controlling, you are owning your woman. 
when you show your private body part and you're showing your nudity in front of other people, it's not nudity itself. It's about you having the dominance over other people. That's exactly the reason why in many law, when men take off their clothes in front of women, it is considered harassment. We say this is the exact reason that we are always putting men in a superior position, putting women in an inferior position. This kind of clothing serves exactly as a moral shackle for us to move forward. It's exactly degrading women's status. It's not helping it. Why are we helping it when we do allow it? When we do allow a society that has public nudity, there's no more mystification of your body anymore, which was the exact point of, from Athena. When we see bikini being normalized and allowed in society, we saw a progression of women in the kind of measures that they can use to actually express themselves. Before, the only way that they express, actually in fear of retaliation, the only way that they can do is to dress up appropriately, like the opening opposition say. But no, it's no more about this given appropriateness. It's about what you want and what you think, exactly as a kind of minority. And before I move on, Chen Mr. Speaker, Chen Bo here is trying to segregate again the psychological factor and the social convention factor when it comes to nude body. But the issue here is when I see a woman with bigger boobs, right? It's not just a social convention telling me bigger boobs is sexy, but also psychologically I'm urged to sexy, right? This is the exact point I want to go on, why we mentioned the idea of mystifying your body. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're strong in hormone and you really want to have sex and you really have this urge, you see people with big boobs, they have their clothes covering them, you still want to have sex with them. This is not an issue, right? This is not an issue with Stop. nudity or not. Sir, sit down. It's not an issue with nudity or not. This is about how does society perceive nudity in the very first place. Think about it, right? So when we're mystifying women, when the child was educated in his childhood, saying that you can't take off your clothes, nudity is wrong. Why is it wrong? Stop. Because it, nudity is only associated with sex. When men see you, they want to have sex with you. When you take nudity, like when you take your clothes off, you are trying to attract and seduce a man. That's exactly, exactly so, no. That's exactly why when we're saying that nudity is something that's so exclusive to yourself asked. that it's not helping these people. That's exactly why for some men, especially male rapists, when they have this obsession for seeing this nudity, they want to take off your clothes and they want to actually get you naked because they don't think that it is something that's so normalized in society. This is in the same way, the society is scaring a lot of teenagers off in saying that, well, maybe sex and nudity is a normal convention, is a normal expression for themselves. They now need to overly lay back and say that, well, maybe nudity is wrong. Maybe we can't actually get access to actually sexual information, to get access to a relationship, because a relationship means showing your body and there's something that is inherently wrong. Up. We say these kind of social trends exactly degrade the kind of civilization that we're talking about. Finally, finally, right? what exactly is a role of the state in our discussion? As I discussed just now, right, we saw a self-contradicting government status. Currently, when in these kind of states that was pictured by our opening government, when there's embracing and there's open atmosphere, we do allow this idea of liberty and we do allow this idea of expression. Yet, there's one part of this expression that is so much excluded from your arsenal of choice because we say you can't express your identity with nudity. Now, we saw so much progress when there's demystification of clothing, when there's demystification of women, of body, right? For example, when you start from like wearing long clothes to wearing bikini, we do see progress in women liberation. We felt that eventually the society needs to allow neutral ground for all groups of people to express. If you want to express that you want to wear a long shirt, fine, we are cold, okay with that, as we currently do. But if you also want to express yourself in nudity, we are also fine with you yourself doing it. In a society where CCTV is currently censoring like basically the video of the sculpture David because of the nudity, we think that this kind of mystification was so wrong that we need to go against it. We don't care whether it's controversial. This is real social advancement. Vote for free will.
my thanks to Tumbo for that uh, speech now to end this debate. Opposition. Yeah, yeah. women value, we do value a uh, gender equality, and we do value a, a equality in social status. Yeah, yeah. What we don't agree is that means, uh, ends does not justify their means of achieving this goal. So yeah, that yeah. is ultimately what Chen Lin has told you and contribute uniquely in this debate to tell you what exactly is the tokenistic meaning of having public nudity and how it jeopardizes the dialogue between different social groups and how necessarily it will, uh, it will lead to a wrong social, uh, it will lead to a like polarization among the society rather than reaching the neutral ground that Zheng Bo keep asserting and we don't know where it comes from. Uh, two, uh, three rebuttals before I come into my uh, class summary. First of all, when he talk about actually they need the neutral government to do such a thing to provide a platform. So there, we say that there's no neutral government and I believe that you don't want me to recite social contract for you for what government, how government is being elected and what a role the government plays in the yeah, society. Yeah. And what is more, sit down and ask, I said, what is more, we say that in the in this status quo, government actually represent and have to have to manage the message that being conducted in a society, have to manage the dialogue and how it proceeds, rather than let allow legalizing this specific uh, re legislation and all of a sudden ban a new body in front of you and let's talk about women liber uh, liberalization and let's talk about gender equality. So that is what we see, not the way of doing such a thing. I'm going to elaborate that, uh, 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 summarize that in my clash. And secondly. Zheng Bo told us about it is the myth of a cloth, it's the covering of a cloth that made the body that is sexually arising, and try to tackle on the point that Chen Lin talked about is a hinting on sex. Ladies and gentlemen, we say that we uh, we say that it's not simply that the core mystical uh, mystic whole thing. We say that more to the core, more to the issue. What exactly is the new body right in front of you mean, and what does that necessary? How does how is your acceptance? How is your tolerance to this new bo new body? Is an un uh, 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 undeterrable variable. So that is why we say in the status quo, this way is not the thing we are going to do. Lastly, when they talk about, keep talking about neutral ground, actually, first of all, we believe that that is a new point. Second, sit down. And secondly, we say that there is actually no such a neutral ground to come into being. We say that in Chen Lin's speech, he talk, keep talking uh, to you about, in, even in an extremely liberal, liberalized society, there are conservative co communities. They are people who are living a life that not the, all the uh, liberal people want. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, so that is how in the status quo, the government is going to allow the process to progress in a more smooth way rather than, uh, rather than hint, uh, giving a cultural crash all of a sudden. Three, uh, two, uh, three clashes in this debate. First of all, what is actually the real nature of public nudity? So we see from the proposition side, from opposing government, they see that this is actually mean a, a celebration of women, and this is the gender equality and social status. First of all, whether this is actually a celebration for women's status, we say no. Why so? In the, uh, as Chenling had told you in his con uh, constructive, by telling you how he hint on sex, how he jeopardizes, how he not necessarily immediately change the perception of normalizing women as a, uh, not as a tool attached to men. And what I want to add here is that why does why, uh, how does a woman's status get achieved in the status quo? We see that they promote for their rights, not from going nude in the first place. We see that the political dialogue, they gradually see the importance yeah, yeah. of uh, women, the role they are playing in the society. Their economic distinct, uh, distinct sit down function in this society and how they can change the world by their own power rather than the body, right? So that is how we see uh, in improvement of women's status. And that is how they ultimately reach the gen gender equality. And what is more, we say that this is actually encouragement of rebellious to the society with a rational basis. Why so? Chen Lin has told you in his constructive, we believe in a more, uh, a more, uh, more effective and more acceptable uh, way for, uh, uh, for promoting a social change. Yeah. It's through dialogue, through better understanding, and through seeing what happened in the status quo, rather than go back to the original society all of a sudden and promote so-called sit down gender equality in the first place. And secondly, the whole proposition bench to uh, totally forgot the religious carrier in this debate. Why we say that actually is an important issue. We see that we are, uh, regardless of this, uh, regardless of Confucius Asia society we are talking about, even in Western liberal democracies, in uh, other other uh, religious conservative countries, 
religion make an important component in their every spiritual life. Yeah, and yeah. that actually leads at the guidance of their every morality. And that actually influences their law legis uh, legislation making. So that is why we say religious caring does have the value, no responses from the government set. And secondly, why we actually need, uh, like, uh, why, why legislation should not be allowed and why, what is the actual government role here? We told you what to legalize in the status quo when we see uh, when we see the society agreed to such a change at that stage. However, yeah. sit down, we don't see a social change in this perspective regarding public nudity because we believe that this is not the way we are going to convey this dialogue between, this, uh, between different genders. We believe that this is not the dialogue that we should conduct between different social groups. It does not necessarily mean that... You disagree, Athena. So, in terms of conservative societies, does it mean that any value that go against it should be banned? For example, gay marriage. Madam, yeah, when we talk about gay marriages, we still feel that people from a conservative society, they feel strong with values against it. But we are not going to appro uh, like protect their rights by having the gay people demonstrate on the street right away. We are going to let the process happen smoothly within the re interpretation among the religion, how the God perceives these people as. So that is exactly a better way we see from the progress of the status quo. Sit down. And lastly, when we talk about what, whether this, uh, this expression should be managed, what are the consequences to be? So we, we heard from Chen Lin's speech by telling you why this, uh, why this conversation needs to be managed in a certain manner that they are more acceptable and more uh, like level playing field, uh, more, um, more objective for the, uh, for the ground for a mutual communication in this perspective. No responses from that. They simply bring about a new idea about neutral ground. And, and we, we believe that is not the thing we're talking about. And what is worse, it's going to bring about the polarization in the society. For those who strongly advocate for liberalism, they are definitely going to say whoa as the proposition said. However, for a group of people who, are, who have their social conventions, who have their traditions to obey, and who have their religious carrying and their own agendas in this society who are carrying about, this way is too great a shock for them. We, we doubt the acceptance and the acceptance of this uh, very specific group of people. On the contrary, we believe that their resistance to this specific certain issue, their hatred to this, uh, this uh, all demonstration of so-called liberal uh, li uh, liberty is not going to happen. We say that it jeopardizes dialogue and jeopardizes the ultimate goal they want to achieve. We want uh, legal, uh, equality, no discrimination in the status quo. We stand strong to oppose. Right, uh, I thank uh, Chanel for that speech. Uh, debaters, thank you very much. You may cross the floor, shake hands. Uh, Leave this room, I'm not going to give you the result.